Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jan Hunter Jr. And check it out. We're gonna learn how to mix live drums in Logic Pro X. Let's get right into it. That's Hunter. Okay guys, so we got some drums loaded up here and let's listen to what we have. All right, so we got a good little groove going right there. So let's go ahead and let's get right into this thing. So the first thing I like to do is uh, level everything. So um, I just kind of turned everything down for right now and we'll just go ahead and level everything back on up. And the first thing I try to do is just get a good blend with the volume and the panning. So let me jump into that right now. And the first thing I noticed right away is, is we got some phasing issues going on. The snare sounds a little nasally. So you just go right into your utility, go to your gain, and go to mono, and just phase invert that, boom. Now we got a full body snare. Cool, so now I can kind of move on to the rest of the drums. So that's the core of the mix right there, believe it or not, is leveling. Uh, I talked about this in my five tips uh, to enhance your production. If you haven't seen that, go ahead. I'll put that in the cards above so you can go ahead, click the card, and it'll take you to that video so we can talk, you know, you can uh, learn further about uh, leveling when I talked about it in, in the mix section. So, um, but back to this video, um, leveling is, this is the core key element of the mix. So from this point forward, I'm just going to enhance what's already there. So what I like to do is just start from uh, maybe like some basic compression, EQ, um, and then add some little wow factors. And by the way, I'm going to be using only Logic plugins. So everything that I'm doing today, you'll be able to do in Logic. So let's go ahead and let's start tweaking these drums. Let's start with the kick drum. So you can go to your dynamics, go to your compressor, and you could use um, the presets. So the presets is gonna save your life, guys. I promise you it's gonna save your life. So let's go to rock kick. Sounding punchy already, right? So let's go ahead and let's go into uh, our EQs. And I like to use the Vintage Collection EQ. And let's, let's do the Vintage Console EQ. Perfect, I'm gonna get rid of these. So it kind of models after a Neve, you know what I mean? So um, I'm familiar with the Neve and everything from school. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start tweaking this kick drum. And actually, I'm going to use a preset just to get started. So I'm going to use the drums and let's go to uh, a pop kick. Yeah. So it just brings that beater out in the front and it starts to get a little warmer. So I'm, I'm liking where this is headed.
Yeah, it's starting to feel real good, guys. It's starting to feel really good. So I'm going to just add um, a little bit of a, a noise gate. Or actually, yeah, let's do, let's do, actually, let's do an expander. And uh, I use an expander because it just slowly closes the, it still works as a gate, but it just, it's just a lot smoother and you're here, you'll hear why um, it works a lot smoother. So let's go ahead and let's add um, this expander. with it and without it. So it just isolates that kick a little bit better, you know what I mean? So we're almost done with the kick, guys. So we're just going to go ahead and... Um, Add a little tweakage to the kick and let's move on to the snare. So I love that. So let's move on to the snare. So we got a really good sounding, sounding snare out the gate. So make sure that, you know, when you're recording your drums, make sure you're recording them clean. That's the majority of the battle is the recording phase. So make sure the recording is solid and clean. And that way on the mix side, you don't have to really stress and add as much. Like with these drums, I'm not going to add a whole lot of stuff. I'm just going to enhance what's already there. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of an expander on there just to kind of uh, get rid of the extra noise and everything, just to clean them up a little bit. Yeah. Cool. So now I'm going to move on to the uh, snare bottom and kind of just add like some little color to that same thing. I'm not going to reinvent these drums. They already sound good. So I'm just going to add color um, to them and just excite the areas that make the, you know, the bottom snares pop that resonate, that resonance. Alright, so I'm going to uh, start from the top with this EQ. 
and just did a complete recall and um, kind of filter the snare bottom one out. So we got it, got it going there. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of an expander on there, just a touch of it. Yeah, so it's starting to feel really, really, really good. Um, I love where this is going. Let's just keep the fun times rolling, you guys. So um, let's go into the toms. So the tom situation, they already sound solid as is. Same thing, I'm just going to color them. So let's just do that much. And um, by the way, uh, I failed to mention that I do like to mix the drums from the drummer's perspective. Audience perspective is personal preference, but I prefer the drummer's perspective because I'm a drummer. And just hearing the drums start from left to right um, just saturates my ear. So yeah, so I'm mixing from drummer's perspective. Sorry that I failed to mention that earlier. So just pan them. Uh, in drummer's perspective, so drum, uh, the tom one to the left and all the way to tom three to all the way to the right. So let's go ahead and let's start tweaking these toms. So we just add some compression right now to the toms. And you guys can kind of peep what I'm doing. I just found right now I'm just kind of catching the attack of the tom where the stick heats, hits the uh, the head. And I really want that aggressive um, approach just because when I play the drums myself, um, I just like to have that precise, you know what I mean? Just that nice solid hit. So I'm just enhancing that with this compression. So you see how it's starting to sound more aggressive. And, you, and again, you know, I'm just, this is actually based off the rock kick preset. And I'm just tweaking it from there, up, up surprisingly. So um, you guys can adapt certain presets so you don't have to just use what the preset is going for or like what it's initially labeled as. Like you can use that across the board, so... Um, yeah, so all these times really need is just basic compression, a little bit of top end EQ, and um, just some noise gating, and that's kind of it. Okay, so we got some compression here, so let's add some EQ, and I like the vintage tube EQ, I really do. So let's go ahead and let's just copy that EQ over to the rest of the drums. Boom. Cool deal. So on that floor tom, uh, I'm just going to add a little bit more of that low end uh, on there. 
Yeah. Cool. So now that we got that kind of warm vibe with that crispy top in, now we can go ahead and start um, using an expander on these toms to kind of get rid of that uh, excess noise. Start with that. And I'm just gonna go one by one now. That's pretty decent. That from this. So it just kind of quiets down the um, the tom resonance, you know what I mean? So do the same thing to the tom two. Actually, I'm just gonna paste that same setting over. deal let's just paste that over to tom three and adjust it accordingly cool deal so let's listen to the drums now So the next thing I want to do is start working on this hi-hat. The hi-hat is uh, can work um, in the same environment as the overheads in a way, and I'll show you why. Um, for this compressor that I'm going to use for the hi-hat, I'm going to use the um, mono compressor, and I'm going to pull up the preset from uh, overheads. So where it says rock overheads, we're gonna use this preset for the hi-hat. So it's catching that same kind of vibe that I actually want from the overheads, but it's capturing that on the hi-hat, which is kind of dope. So I'm gonna tweak this preset, and then we're gonna go ahead and build from this preset, okay? So that's a decent amount of compression. I like that. So we're going to go ahead and start EQing these hi-hats. And for this EQ, uh, we're just going to use a channel EQ, just a basic one, just so we can kind of see the frequency spectrum and just throw a different plug in at you um, that you could use some other options so you're not just limited to the 2BQ or the console EQ. You can actually use the channel EQ as well. I'm gonna add just a pinch of brightness, but I'm not gonna use this EQ to do it. I'm actually gonna use the 2BQ because I like the saturation that is emulated from the 2BQ. So let's go to the vintage tube and let's just add a little top end sizzle. That's decent, just a hair of some top end sizzle. Getting there, so let's work on these overheads. So, what I like to do for overheads is I like to group them together. There's two ways to group it. One way is you can go ahead and use an auxiliary strip, or the way that I'm going to use right now, which is the create track stack. 
And what you do is you just highlight all the tracks that you want to be grouped together. Um, and you go ahead and right click and hit create track stack. And hit create, boom. Now we have a track stack and I'm gonna name these overheads, boom. And I'm gonna treat the overheads as one lump sum. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and use the same compression that we used on the hi-hat. I'm gonna use these on the overheads and copy that over. And uh, forgive me if I'm moving too fast. How to copy something over is you can go ahead and use the option and click and drag command. So if I were to just hit option, click the compressor and drag it over, it's gonna copy that same um, compressor with the settings over to this next channel strip, kind of dope. So in this case, that was a mono hi-hat, we want a stereo channel. So we're gonna make a new compressor. We're gonna start all over again. So we're gonna go to compressor and then we're gonna use the rock overheads. Boom. We're just gonna listen to that solo. That's a decent amount of compression. So let's listen to that with the with the drums mixed in. So guys, that's the basics of how to mix your drums in Logic. You don't want to recreate the sound if the drums are recorded well. Um, you, you'll actually damage the drums. So you want to be very delicate with how you treat each individual piece. So this is just a starter way just to get you started on mixing your drums in Logic. So let's listen to everything that we've done. Let's do a, a before and after and check this out. So started from about there and let's find somewhere where some toms are a little active. That looks pretty good right about there. Let's go back to that section where we just were actually. Cool, so that's the after. Let's go and let's do like a, a rough before so we can just see where we are. Let's turn all these off. Right, so here's before. And let's go to after. All right, so we're pretty much there. I don't wanna leave you guys hanging here. You thought it was over? Nah, it's not over yet, son. Let's go ahead and let's add some reverb to these drums and add some dimension to them and let's expand these out and we'll call it. So we're just gonna add some reverb and then I'll close this video out after the reverb is added. So there's a couple of ways about going, uh, about adding your reverb. Um, I just like to do the typical aux send um, and send everything out to a reverb. So the fastest way to add a reverb is, is you could just go into, um, your bus area, your sins. And what I like to do is just go ahead and hit bus. And let's just do a uh, bus two. Um, and I just sent that out from the overheads. Then you can just go ahead and turn it off. Um, but that's the fastest way to create a, a bus or an aux. So uh, we're gonna use, let's go into our reverb and let's use uh, the space designer. Perfect. And what I like to do is I just like to start with the snare and just send a little bit of the snare to that. And we're going to name this drum verb. Boom. So let's see how this snare sounds with that reverb.
that's, that doesn't sound bad at all, actually. So I'm going to shorten this reverb up, turn the size down, turn the length down a little bit. That's pretty good. Uh, I like typically I like short verbs just to kind of get the reverb trail started. And then if I need to add, depending on the song, if I need to add a longer reverb, then I'll add it. But I typically like to start with a short verb. Yeah. Nice. But we can shorten that a little bit more. And that's decent. So I typically like to send the snare. Um, and actually, I'm going to create a track stack with the toms. And I'm going to just send all three toms to that reverb. So we're going to name this toms. Boom. And that track stack is going to get sent to uh, the, the sin of that track stack is going to get sent to the drum reverb. Cool. And then just a hair of the cymbals. And let's also send a little bit of that hi-hat. And you got like a good rough mix on the drums. This is like that's like a perfect, perfect spot to add whatever you want to add. Um, I'll have to pick up on the next video of how to add samples in Logic to your drums. That's going to be the next video. So we're going to stop right here. And in the next video, we're going to talk about adding samples to your drums. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope this helps you uh, mix your drums a little bit better and give you a better understanding of what it's all about. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, if it was helpful, go ahead and hit that thumbs up uh, and please share this video. Subscribe to my channel and make sure that you hit that bell icon uh, to get notifications for my next uploads. And guys, it's been real. I appreciate it. Let's go.